Hello, I'm Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. I'm Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. I'm the Dungeon Tutor. And I'm Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. Thanks for joining me. Hello, friends. I am Rob, the Dungeon Tutor. Welcome to another session of the Dungeon Tutor. Today, I'm going to be talking about the sweet spot of gaming. That is... The point in which you feel the most comfortable, like you can be the most dynamic, um, without being too powerful, where you know things kind of get complicated, and not so feeble yet that you feel like your character's got all this potential in front of them, but you're not there. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, uh, this is not just a Dungeons and Dragons issue either. This is something that actually matches all games. Different games have you at different levels of power, and some of them are variable. For instance, if you play GURPS, which is a point-by system, you determine how many character points the characters start with. So, if you want your characters to feel like your average Joe, you might start really low at just 25 character points. If you want your characters to be quite competent, skilled at what they do, and able to handle most day-to-day -day situations, you might start them with 100 character points. If you want your characters to be really amazing, like, you know, experienced and, and, and really competent in a wide variety of disciplines and challenges, maybe 200 points. Now you're talking about somebody who's really going to be good, kicking butt at whatever they need to do. Uh, if you focus in one area, you're going to be amazing at it. But a 200-point character, for instance, could be a black belt in karate, Olympic level at fencing, uh, a, a pan-discipline uh, scientist, all at once and be awfully good at all of those, probably with pretty solid stats beyond that. So, you know, that's a sweet spot that's artificial. You figure out what's going to be the sweet spot for the adventure you're running. If you're running superheroes, for instance, the number of 200 is even kind of low. You want characters that feel like they'd fit into a, a four-color adventure, you know, something like something from Marvel or, or DC. Not quite Superman, but certainly better than uh, D, uh, Marvel's Demolition Dunphy. Um, you know, you want something in between there. You know, 500 points is pretty solid. And if you can pick out of the super's powers uh, pool, you can definitely make characters that can, that can do well. You're not going to be Batman or Superman, but you'll be able to be, uh, you know, mid-level X-Man or Avenger, possibly. Um, well, the Avengers aren't fair. They're kind of all over the place. But, you know, quite honestly, when you figure out the average, you've got Hawkeye, who kind of brings the average down quite a bit from Thor and Iron Man and, you know, Captain America, right about there. So, uh, that's, that, that's a game with a sweet spot that's artificial. The Game Master can snipe exactly what point they want their characters to, to be at where they feel like they're good enough to do what they need to do, but they can still see some improvement and advancement that their characters can experience. That means that uh, you have to kind of artificially create that background and stuff that explains how they got to that point if you care about it, but, you know, that's, that's, that's another kettle of fish. Now, for something like, we'll go with 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons... Most people would think that first level is not that sweet spot. Uh, there are a lot of people who really love playing low-level characters. They like the vulnerability. They like the fact that a single blow might knock them out or possibly kill them. Proof that that is something that people still like and still go to can be seen by the success of Funnel Adventures from Dungeon Crawl Classics, where you start out at zeroth level, just do the best you can and hope to survive and get to first level. So your chances of surviving are even less. It's kind of a little bit of a lemming run. Just rush in, hope for the best. Or you could look at games that purposefully make you feel vulnerable, like bloat games, The Blackest of Deaths. There's a lot of death that goes on there. Um, and your character never will get to be superhuman. You'll be, at best, 
pretty competent, but by that time you might be missing a few body parts. It's a pretty rough game, so you know you you don't want to have characters that you you know get too attached to that you uh, feel are important for the story and the the world. That's not that game's focus. See. So first level might be awfully, awfully weak for some people to feel at their comfort level, but for other people, that is a sweet spot. That Those first few levels feel good, feel like it's my victory. I thought out the challenges that allowed my characters to survive. And for some groups, that might be it. Then by the time they get to fourth level, they're like, ah, I kind of miss that miss having my characters being more vulnerable. Now I know I can take a sword blow from the shadows and I don't have to, I could be a little bit lazy and still expect to survive the odd encounter or two, unless your DM is very, you know, diabolical, um, which perfectly fine. No questions from my devil daddies out there, but more people I think would think that a span between third to fifth level might be that comfort zone. Now, a single blow won't take you out, so you can even take a relatively non-combatant character like a, a wizard and move them up in defense of somebody and not worry about a single blow taking you down. That can be a, a relief, even though that, that wizard still should look to not have to take damage they, if they can avoid it. It does mean that, you know, you have gotten to the point where the universe thinks you're a little bit more important and therefore is not going to snuff you out like that. So that's cool. Um, but fifth level, yeah, third edition, fifth level is where you start really starting to feel a bit of power, don't you? You start getting the first gotcha powers. If you're a fighter, that first second attack that you get, just now I can, I've doubled my effectiveness. Every round, I'm getting two attacks in, and that feels pretty darn good. And maybe I'll even get a bonus attack in with my offhand weapon. So now I'm getting attacks, several attacks. That's my big deal. And at the same time, your paladin friend is also... Ah, you've, you've got a few spells now, but yes, you also have the ability to multi-attack. And the ranger has the ability to attack twice, and... You know, the monk has been attacking all over the place already, but that's really their thing. And now they're starting to get a little more powerful with their attacks, so that's good. But the spellcasters are grinning from ear to ear because <laughs> third level spells. <laughs> Capped, of course, by the most obvious and dynamic spell, the fireball. Yeah, all of a sudden, you as a wizard can stand back at a distance and nuke a whole squad of, of opponents. And when you're fighting in, indoors, that oftentimes can be their entire side. Just everybody takes damage. You may not roll fantastically, but you've hit everybody and done some damage. That's something that nobody else can probably do at that point. The doors have been unlocked for you. And when I say wizard, I mean sorcerers. I mean, you know, people who can who, who steal wizard spells, too. You know, warlocks to a certain extent and the like. But that's really what I'm getting at, is that you hit that plateau, now you're feeling what wizardry is all about for you. It's, it's dealing mass damage. It's taking control of the environment and bending it to your will once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've got it, but you've got to be controlling it. You've gotta, you can't just fire it off at the first chance. You've got to wait for the opportune moment, don't you? It's not until later when you have multiple spell slots. You can start you know, launching fireballs as your first action. Yeah, um, that comes after a while, but maybe fifth level is that sweet spot for you where you first got those spells and now you're going to scurry and try to give yourself more options at fifth level you know that third level spell fly is awfully good and can certainly take the top off <laughs> pardon the pun uh, of a lot of encounters and maybe that might be pretty fun or you might settle for that second level spell levitate get yourself out of the thing and then rain down terror on your opponents um you know there's 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 options but 
Maybe that's it. Maybe you feel that seventh level might be your sweet spot, about the time when some campaigns are starting to wind down. By seventh level, you're getting fourth level spells, you're getting some nifty abilities from your classes, your uh, your uh, paths, whichever one you took, and uh, you know, you're feeling even more dynamic. You can take even more punishment now. Uh, you should have been doing things if you follow the standard progression, where your words have meaning because you're the hero. You've already done pretty impressive things. To get to that plateau, you're already somebody to contend with. And the world is probably starting to take notice of you. So by the time you hit that point, that might be your sweet spot. And higher and higher and higher you can go. Now when you get up to higher levels, there gets to be a point or it starts to get more complicated. Your spells require more setup and more concern for everything. And it's not as instinctive as it used to be. You have to consider things because the enemies are deadlier and they can maybe snuff you out quicker too. So the challenge never goes away if the game master is on. It just means that you have more toys and more choices and more options. So does the game master. <laughs> So you will eventually hit a point where you have left the sweet spot, where it's suddenly, you know, a little bit more challenging to keep going. And that is a danger that most groups have, is eventually you get to a point where it's like, you know, I remember when it was easier when we were at sixth level. We're still tough enough, we could do whatever we wanted, uh, you know, we just, we, we couldn't split up because we were still too weak, but we all knew what we were doing, and we all, you know, kind of could keep track of what everybody's abilities were. We knew each other, and we could take on things together. Now, it's like we feel like each of us could take on things by ourselves, and Frank might run off on, on their own to take care of things, because the group isn't quite as necessary anymore for some circumstances. Oh, yes, we'll all get back together for the big challenges, of course. So... Yeah, there, there definitely can be a sweet spot in, in a lot of games, and it's something to think about, as a game master especially, because you want your players to be engaged. You want them to be excited for the adventure, and if, again, the adventurer and the, the rules for the game have hit such complexity that some of the fun and spontaneity are taken away as the players page through all of their items they've gotten and the gear that they have as options and the powers and abilities that have piled up when the players start to have to make cheat sheets to figure out all of the different tactics they have access to maybe you've gone past that sweet spot maybe now you're going into the towards the end for those players yeah, you might ignore the signs, you might trudge on, you might still carry the game through for years. Of course. Of course. But, that sweet spot is a very real thing. And, you know, different players have different levels of mileage on what they consider to be fun. It's just a nice idea to think from the perspective sometimes of your players, and sometimes as a player, think about the Game Master and think, was there a time is there a time that you're either looking forward to or kind of wish you were back at so that you could enjoy the game a little bit differently in a way that maybe you enjoyed more? And I think that's really what the sweet spot amounts to. When I played 3rd edition D&D, the sweet spot was about 7th level. You've already made a choice for prestige class if you're going to do that. You had access to a number of abilities, but it wasn't overwhelming. And... The power levels were still fairly balanced. Oh yeah, there, there were some classes that were not very balanced, and certainly prestige classes that weren't very balanced. But the breakage point didn't get for a few more levels, so at least for a while, everybody was important, everybody was about the same power level, or at least not so feeble that the rest of the group could just ignore them. Um, uh, obviously, you could have some ridiculous builds and stuff that could get you even by 7th level really ridiculous, but that's usually just focusing on one number statistic. A good game master could get around, oh wow, you're 7th level and you already have a 38 armor class. Huh. Alright, well, that's, that's pretty good. Here comes all the stuff you're going to just have to make saving throws against. Just saying. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, 
that's my thoughts on the sweet spot. And um, again, it's really kind of hard to talk about because everybody's wired a little bit differently. Those of us who want to go to completion uh, will force ourselves to go to level 20 if the Game Master lets us. Um, otherwise, mostly when I play, I just kind of want to enjoy it. I don't want to worry too much about juggling powers and abilities and frequently when I was actually playing my wizard there were a number of times when I surprised myself with how lax I was getting with drilling down and focusing on what was the most effective layout and pattern of my abilities. Sometimes it was just, I know I can handle most situations so I'm good, I don't have to juggle my spells that I have memorized. What I had was pretty solid and uh, I enjoyed that more than I've ever enjoyed playing a wizard. Which is this is totally true. So, take it to heart. Um, maybe uh, this is something to think about as far as empathizing with the people around you at your table. What do they really enjoy? Um, how do we get there? And if we've already passed that point, maybe, you know, think about maybe, you know, finding a way to you know, draw things to a close and, and go back and, and try to play in the time periods. That might be a little bit more enjoyable. Just something to think about. So, uh, that's my thoughts for today. I am Rob, Dungeon Tutor, hopefully. Uh, yeah, this sparks some ideas, some, some thoughts, some theories. If you yourself find that you have a particular sweet spot that you really love playing at, by all means, leave it in the comments. We can talk about it, and uh, we might find some common ground. Wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people out there felt similarly to me that uh, it's not all about the climb and the journey, but enjoying the the, the journey where you're at. Uh, so, uh, thanks again. I am Rob, and hopefully I will see you in a future uh, lesson. If you enjoyed this or found this to be useful or, or thought-provoking, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, what have you. Uh, certainly appreciate you, you watching this time and uh, any time in the future. But what I really love more is if you would leave a comment behind something we can talk about. I respond to all comments, and I'd be very happy to hear from you. So, until that next time, thank you for joining me. I am Rob the Dungeon Tutor, and I'll see you for another lesson in the very, very near future. Thank you, and farewell.